Joel Lance here today. We're outside Honey Fire Barbecue here in Nashville, Tennessee, West Nashville, to do their Cletus challenge. So for this challenge, it's about six pounds of barbecue. We have a pound and a half of their uh, fries, a pound and a half of their queso white mac and cheese, and then a pound and a half of pulled pork and a pound and a half of pulled chicken. So it sounds really good. I love barbecue. If we win, we get a $50 gift card. The challenge is 50 bucks. It's not free uh, if you beat it per se, but you do get a $50 gift card, so like I'm assuming you can kind of negate it and kind of get it for free, but it's not officially for free. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, uh, but I think we're gonna have 60 minutes to do so. Only two people ever beaten it, would being uh, Randy Centel and I believe Brandon the Garbage Puzzle. So let's head on in, have some fun. This is supposed to be some of Nashville's best barbecue. I love barbecue, so let's eat some food. Let's have some fun. Hey everyone, real quick, I want to thank the sponsor of this video being Manscaped.com, the premium global brand for men's grooming and hygiene products. If you don't already know, Manscaped offers the best tools and liquid formulations for the big three of odor zones, being your body, your butt, and your balls. So Manscaped just launched their new fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. And I'm excited to be one of the first to actually get to try out the Lawnmower 4.0. It's waterproof, cordless trimmer, and seriously, I am just blown away by the design, the quality, just freaking look at it. So the Lawnmower 4.0 has ceramic blades with skin safe technology to help reduce nicks and cuts. And it can always easily be replaced so you can groom with confidence. The guards are really easily adjustable. Full charge lasts up to 90 minutes with the LED light. That thing will just Super smooth, it works really well, and it's definitely the right tool for your family jewels. And what I love about the Lawnmower 4.0 is it includes this multi-function on-off switch where you can actually put on a travel lock. So see, when I press it, it won't actually just start. So you're not gonna have this thing going off in your bag while you're on an airplane. So right now you can get 20% off and free shipping by using my code Hanson at manscaped.com. That's right, so go check out that link down below and go use the code Hanson to save 20% and get free shipping. Trust me, your balls will thank you. All right, everyone, so here we are. Uh, my mistake, it's actually 45 minutes. So 45 minutes, uh, again, I believe there's only two winners, they said. It looks really good, so spiral beer batter fries and making mac and cheese and meat. So it looks delicious. Got some sauce. Raina, you ready to go? Yes. Got some gloves, trying to stay clean. So, uh, well, let's get started. Save the count of five, four, three, two, one. Cheers. Pretty good taste of sauce, nice and sticky, sweet. Good moisture on the full pork. Hey everyone, welcome to this video where today we're at Honey Fire Barbecue guys in Nashville, Tennessee. So good to be here in Nashville guys, great to be in Tennessee, and here to have some Tennessee barbecue. So definitely a uh, interesting challenge in the fact that you have a whole bunch of their kind of spiral french fries. So basically it's like french fries slash potato wedges, they're more like potato wedges, then you have a whole bunch of their white uh, queso mac and cheese, aka just like a white mac and cheese. You then have a pound and a half of pulled pork and a pound and a half of their pulled chicken. Um, so overall, really nice flavors. Um, they did have the uh, sauce on it and you like are to have as much sauce as you want. That's like part of the challenge. The sauce is definitely an integral thing and a thing that I feel is definitely never looked over and never gone without. And I think that kind of speaks to the style of barbecue it is. White smoke on the chicken. Similar to the Memphis barbecue we had, and this is again Nashville, so we're talking like two hours away. I'm gonna call it just Tennessee barbecue. Generally, uh, the Tennessee barbecue guys, just like the ribs, like the sticky sweet sauces is a big, big, big component of it. And the sauces were definitely sticky and sweet. Um, one of the gentlemen uh, we were with mentioned he saw a big jar of honey, and I believe that would make sense. Like, 
it just these these sauces are very viscous they're very thick very sweet but they are very nicely flavored so the pulled pork itself um, had a solid smoke on it um, it uh, wasn't bad definitely when you added the addition of that sauce it really brought out some unique flavors some brought out some additional sweetness the chicken um, was definitely a very very light smoke at least to my palate um, now I do generally tend to enjoy a heavier smoke barbecue um, so but this was good like it was good just compared to my to my palate it was very lightly smoked um, which was not bad uh, the meats were pretty juicy and then when it came to the spiral fries they had a good um, coating or a good seasoning on them kind of like a general fry spice I guess you could call it and uh, then the queso the white queso the mac and cheese it was good as well and even though I'm not the biggest mac and cheese person I can appreciate you know an item for what it is and this was a time where I could appreciate that it was a rich it was a very creamy and it was a uh, overall solid you know tasting item mac and cheese and if you liked mac and cheese I think you would really 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 like it um, quite like it is it's a white cheese definitely you know not really like a cheddar taste but a very kind of milder um, bringing more of that cream that butter that almost more bechamel um, kind of flavoring in a sauce but yeah, really good overall, um, solid food, and definitely a good fair size challenge. A couple minutes in, really like the full pork on it. Raina, how's everything? It's so good. It's good. Nice I, flavor. It's definitely a sweet sauce. And that's one reason why it's so neat to try different styles of barbecue, different styles of cuisine, because like this meat undoubtedly was made to have the sauce as an integral part of it, whereas like Texas barbecue, you would never dare touch sauce. So let me know down below what your favorite style of barbecue is, whether it be, we'll say a Tennessee or Memphis sticky sweet, maybe it's a Texas style heavy smoke, let me know down below. Like I said, there had previously only been two winners, yes, only two winners, which ultimately speaks to the difficulty of this food challenge. Which I mean, six pounds, 45 minutes, it definitely is quite a bit of weight. The thing with a barbecue challenge as well is you have to realize there's no weight loss during cooking. Like if you do a uh, five pound burger and the burger patty was four pounds of weight pre-cooked, you know, it's gonna lose a little bit of weight by the time it's cooked, but this, all items are already cooked, already being weighed, so this is a solid six pounds, which does make generally barbecue challenges a little bit more difficult than some other kinds of challenges, like burger challenges, generally because, again, no weight is actually lost in the cooking process. If you're curious as to where the name came from, because this challenge was called the Cletus Challenge, um, it was named after, I believe, what is the gentleman's grandfather, and I'm second guess myself, it was either grandfather or son, but I think it was his grandfather. So it was named after a family member, which I can always appreciate, you know, giving a little bit of a ode to our, uh, you know, a, a loved one um, in itself, especially when, you know, it's kind of like a barbecue restaurant. I find barbecue restaurants generally run in families. Families are an integral part of it, generally go on for generations and generations. And that's what I wish to this location as well as all other places, guys. Long withstanding success, love, and of course, barbecue. Oh, I think I'm eating some paper. Extra fiber, I guess. Nashville overall is a really cool place and I have some additional footage at the end of the video which I would definitely, definitely, definitely recommend you uh, checking out. In fact, there may even be some Nashville hot chicken um, to be in store at the end, so definitely you don't want to miss that. Um, in addition, guys, if you're liking this video so far, yeah, consider uh, giving it a like, maybe consider subscribing, guys. It's much appreciated. And not to mention, not to mention, I gotta know right now, what do you think of this challenge? Like, it's a little messy, but would you give it a go? Like, I mean, pulled pork, chicken, macaroni and cheese, potato wedges. Let me know down below in a comment. But that, I believe that's pretty much all the information I have to give you today. Um, like I said, definitely check out the end of the video. Hopefully, Reina and I will be able to get some food challenge wins for this one. Hopefully, we will become winner 
three and winner four out of the countless attempts and the only two other winners. Um, but yeah, essentially overall solid challenge, a good six pounds of food. Um, I didn't know if there was any records or anything going into it. We definitely weren't chasing any, but really just kind of taking our time and enjoying um, what was ultimately a pretty nice tasting challenge. So that everybody, if you're ever in the area, Honey Fire is a really cool spot. And uh, yeah, so that, let's get to the rest of the video and uh, let's ultimately see what happens. Definitely some cheesy mac and cheese, but I'll taste really good. Oh, it's sitting heavy about. We will get it done. Leave no doubt. And we are done. Maybe about I'm not really sure. Somewhere between nine and ten minutes in, of course, you'll have the time around screen. So yeah, pretty dang, pretty good barbecue challenge. Um, the meat's really nice. The uh, queso mac and cheese is very interesting. I did enjoy it. Had a good flavor. I, I think I preferred that to uh, like a uh, orange mac and cheese, cheddar mac and cheese. Excuse me. So no complaints in that regard. Excuse me. Woo, sorry guys. Ooh, got some uh, burps. All right. So that we get a fifty dollar gift card. It's pretty cool. Rena's doing really well. Just finishing up there, so uh, tune in as Raina continues to destroy the chat. You like it? I'm very surprised. I, you don't like sweet. I do like sweet. I told you. I just like sweet. I should have left the glove on. My cup's dirty. Oh, look, I got a clean cup. You can fix that. I like gloves though. This way my hands are clean. Oh.
right? So we're like probably roughly, I'm not exactly sure how far we are, maybe like 20 minutes, something around there. Uh, Rena's basically down to her last bite, so come on Rena, get her done. All right, and finished up. Again, I don't know, probably about 21 minutes, uh, something like that, but good job Rena. Hey. And look, your hands are actually clean. There you go. I was a little worried there for a second. I was kidding. So yeah, that was a good spot. Thanks to Honey Fire. Definitely a really nice place. Um, with those $50 gift cards, I definitely need to try some of the ribs. Our friend James down in Mississippi. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I always down for brisket. Our friend James down in Mississippi said specifically these were his favorite ribs of all time. So we're gonna try the ribs. Definitely that Memphis sweet sticky sauce. And uh, so let's get some barbecue, have some fun. Let's explore the rest of it. But just in case you don't want to stick around and watch us eat really good barbecue, of course, till next time everybody stay happy, I'll you're happy eating. I still got food on my face. And uh, you know, have a lovely day. Have a lovely life. You gotta rock, remember that, and uh, yeah. You know what to do, just just live your life. All right everyone, so here we are, honey fire still. I got a pound of pure fatty sliced brisket. Looks very delicious, can't wait to get into that. Then we have some of their wet and dry ribs. Uh, we have a friend named James in Mississippi. He said these are his favorite ribs of all time. So I got a uh, half rack of wet, half rack of dry. So we're gonna try it. So some Nashville barbecue. So we have some of the best barbecue in Nashville. So let's try it. Let's find out. I think it's only suiting. I start with the ribs. Courtesy to Tennessee Barbecue. I mean, Memphis is really known for the ribs. So we'll try the uh, ribs here first. I'll start with the dry. But they did give me sauce, so I want to wet them myself. Okay, so definitely get a smoky flavor. Not a super heavy smoke, but a nice bit of smoke. We have that little uh, kind of dry rub on there. So it's nice and textured. It's not overly, uh, not overly soft, not overly thick. Really good texture, but very tender. It has a good smoke flavor. Again, not a very heavy smoke flavor. Not comparable to like a Texas level smoke, but. Probably more like a hickory level. Just a very, on the, the dry at least, very, very, very light um, seasoning, very light rub. So definitely you're getting more of the flavor of just the pork, just the meat, which is tasty. Uh, but if you're looking for like a sticky sauce or you know a heavy salt pepper like in Texas, it's not quite to that level. But that rub's very good. Definitely, like I said, char charcoal, definitely just charcoal, definitely just that wood. It's good. I like. Like I said, you can definitely tell you get some of those charcoal aspects, it's not like pure wood like in Texas. But it's good, very nice. Again, cooked perfectly. Can't ask for a more moist, more tender, uh, you know, yet textured rib. Now let's try the wet. This is a more traditional kind of Texas or Tennessee style barbecue, uh, kind of a Memphis style wet sticky rib. Very wet and sticky. Woo. All right, I think this is gonna be the, the real game changer right here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. The wet rib is where it's at. 
So again, you're getting that beautiful textured rib, and that nice bit of smoke. You're getting that nice little bit of saltiness from that rub. But you're getting that sweet, sticky sauce. All right, that wet rib, fire. Really, really, that's, that's, that, that's the game changer right there. Definitely that wet rib. Fire. All right, next the lady said their brisket is delicious. So I got some nice fatty brisket. Very delicious looking. As for it's sliced, it also normally comes chopped. But just look at that, look at that grain. Look at that texture. Just falling apart, dangly. Mm. Mm. Oh wow. Oh yeah. All right, so the texture is very, very good. It's really well cooked. Beautiful beefiness, very soft, very succulent. Just falls apart. Nice bit of fat in it. The rub and the crust of it. You definitely get some smoke. And that smoke ring. Not overly salty by the means, not a heavy salt, not a heavy pepper. And then I would again also say like a lighter, a lighter smoke. Than like a Texas barbecue, but still very good. But you know, definitely a lot lighter salt, light, lighter pepper. Definitely just more of the meat. You're tasting just the beef, more of the beef. I bet that actually go really well. There's a salt shaker. I bet it go really well with extra salt. Now they did give me a cup of sauce with the brisket, so I will try it. Generally I wouldn't dip brisket in the sauce, but I will try it in the sauce. Because if it came with it, it was intended for it. Ooh, just look at that, look at that, it just fell apart. That fatty brisket, look at that, Ugh. All right, dip it in the sauce. Sticky. Mm. All right. So the sauce definitely adds a different dynamic. It adds a little bit of sweetness, um, which is, it's, it's definitely nice. It goes well with it. That's pretty dang good. I almost feel bad dipping brisket into sauce though. But it's pretty good. I'm more of a traditionalist, which is like, you know, salt pepper but in Tennessee I guess this is okay to do the sauce also provides not only a bit of sweetness but it does provide a little bit of extra salt so it is a good addition I like it Go back to this wet, sticky rib. Traditional Tennessee style, kind of Memphis style rib barbecue. The more that I have the ribs, I'm really tasting again. If you kind of like that, that charcoal aspect, not only just the smoke from the wood, but flavors of a charcoal grill. It's a good flavor on it. Adds a nice bit with that pork. Again, pork being very, uh, not the heaviest flavor, something that will be able to take on a flavor. So it's really taking it on.
Tasty. All right, the last thing I'm gonna try, I'm gonna get one of their famous peanut butter banana pie. Banana pie? Peanut butter banana pudding. Famous peanut butter banana pudding. People come here just to buy this. So I'm gonna grab one, I'm gonna give it a go. All right, everybody. That is peanut butter. This is banana pudding. Peanut butter, nut butter on top. They're famous, peanut butter, banana pudding, which looks and sounds very delicious. So again, they said people come all over from here, so I'm ready to try it. So look at that, that is thick. That is thick and that is pure white. So there's no yellow on the top of this banana, or at least this clump right here. Let's give it a go. Ooh, okay. So definitely get a banana. It's a very light banana and a very fluffy, almost, almost like half pudding, half cool up texture. Like here, I'll try to see if I can get one I bite this to get the, the idea of it. Woo! And I just got peanut butter on that. So super light. It's, it's almost like the pudding is aerated and and it's like a peanut butter sauce in it. So it's sweet, it's light, it's banana. You know what? There's definitely some cream cheese in it. I'm getting some cream cheese flavor. You know what? It tastes a lot like a, uh, tastes a lot like a peanut butter pie. You know peanut butter pies like whipped cream, peanut butter, and a little bit of like cream cheese or something in there? No, we got cream cheese. That's definitely it. Definitely it. Peanut butter, it tastes like a peanut butter pie. Delicious. Yeah, basically like peanut butter pie. Peanut butter pie in a cup. That is good. Definitely rich. Definitely not calorie free. Here's another butter. But yeah, peanut butter pie, banana pudding, deliciousness. That's a great dessert. It's like four bucks. Definitely recommend giving this a try. Wet ribs are great. The brisket's really good. So yeah, everybody, that is Honey Fire. And it's really good. So yeah, they said it's Nashville's best barbecue. And honestly, I will say it was very, very delicious. Definitely liked it, would recommend. We went looking for a Tennessee style barbecue in the Nashville area. I give it a go. So everybody, until next time, I hope you enjoyed. Show cost a meal here. Uh, it was about fifty dollars, but yeah, it tasted really good. Loved it a lot. And until uh, next time, everybody, stay happy, happy eating. Have a lovely day. Hi everybody, and a special thank you to Scott from Kentucky, who always said he said if you come to Nashville or come to Tennessee, I'll come on down. And Sure enough, you did, right? Did. Yes, so huge sir. thanks going by. He's wrapping some brand new garbage pills with gear. Right. So hey, man, thanks so much. Nice to meet you there. Yes, sir. Until next time, and uh, we'll be in Kentucky next, hopefully. It's awesome. Next I'll time. be there. Until then. Thanks, man. Hey, everyone. So I'm here at the famous Hattie B's. Hattie B's, H-A-T-T. I.E. Pastry S. Hattie B's Hot Chicken, known to be the best Nashville hot chicken in Nashville. So let's get some Nashville hot chicken and try it out. All right, everyone. So they weren't open for dining, so I had to get to go. But this is what the Nashville hot chicken looks like. I got a dark quarter to try out. Got uh, pickles on top, served on a piece of bread to help absorb that sauce, that oily, uh, wet Nashville. So it's an oil base, and then they pour the seasoning on it. I do go with the hot, the original hot. So this is supposed to be pretty spicy. So let's try it out. There we go, it kind of works enough. I'll try to keep my head there. All right, so Nashville hot. Definitely maintain some of its crispness. I'm just gonna try this little crisp piece. 
Okay. Whoa, there's definitely some good heat to that. Good heat. I mean, this is again the traditional Nashville hot, hot level. I'll try a bite of that. All the flavors and juiciness. Mm. Definitely juicy. Very strong cayenne flavor on it. It still maintained a pretty good crispness, despite it being takeout. And of course the sauced chicken. Try a pickle. Now that bite looks hot. Let's try that. Mm. Definitely lots of nice seasoning on it. All right, that was a good bite. See, so yeah, it's hot, but it's not deathly hot. Very flavorful, and I'll try a bite of this bread because it's dipped in the hot oil. Mm. Oh yeah. All right, that was pretty dang good. So Hattie B's Nashville, it's good. I like it. I must try when you're in the area. Awesome, and down in the beautiful Centennial Park in Nashville, Tennessee. So lovely green space, got some water, I'll show you. It's home of a, I forget, the word slipped in my head. I want to say it's the Pentagon, but it's not the Pentagon. But anyway, it's a home of this great big building, uh, which houses the biggest, like, inside statue, I guess, in America, which is pretty cool. But I will show you what we can. It doesn't look like that place is open, but uh, yeah, have a look at this. Very beautiful. Big old, beautiful little waterway they have going here. There's geese down there. Nice open green space. There's that big old building I was talking about. We'll head over there and... Uh, yeah, beautiful day out here. And in the water we have some fish. You can't really see those too well, but there's also some turtles. Uh, excuse me. All right. There's one, there's a shell. And there's the other one, there's his head right there. There's some fish, maybe you can see them. And if not, there's more of the turtles. Yeah, it is. And this is an interesting find. Uh, I don't know, oh, you might have just missed it. Um, but there was a baby softshell turtle. He just buried himself right there. Like the very typical flat nose. Uh, shucks, I totally missed it on camera. I see him moving a little bit. If he continues to come out, maybe I'll show him again. But uh, lots of little fish and lots of snails there too. But that was cool to see. So there's different kinds of turtles in here too. There we go. Parthenon, that's what it's called. And yeah, big old building. Looks almost kind of like a Greek, Egyptian kind of thing. Has some really, yeah, really cool uh, artistry work up there. And then if you go inside, I know it houses the great big statue of, I believe it's Athena. And again, I believe it's the biggest housed statue in America. Here's some more of the water. There we have some geese on the water. And they also have some beehives over there, so somebody is cultivating some bees on that little island. So that's pretty cool. The way to kind of keep them, I guess, off the beaten track and still in the area to pollinate everything. Very, very pretty here, though. Hi everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. If you click my face right here, you can subscribe. Yes, that's right, click my face, subscribe, guys. It helps me out, helps you out, then you don't miss an upload. And hopefully I can meet you when I come to your city. Also, click a video right here. I specifically pick two videos, yes, that's right, two videos specifically for you right here. So click a video right now, get that going, and it's gonna end, so click one quick. Let's go, let's go.
and have a great day.